Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Ricoh AF5. It was made from 82 or 83 to about 1986. Has a nice wide angle 38 millimeter f2.8 color Rikonon lens. It's four elements in three groups and it'll take uh, 46 millimeter filters. The smallest stop is not given in the manual. I haven't been able to find it online. But they say the guide, the guide number of the flash is 12 meters and the closest uh, is one meter at F12. So it stops down to at least F12. That's a little bit of a weird value, but anyway, it uh, auto focuses from one meter to infinity and it looks like it does it in three zones. I don't know how many steps it has. It shows you in the viewfinder with a half press. It's got mountains and then two people for kind of intermediate distances and then the head and shoulders of one person for fairly close up, you know, down to about a meter. If you're closer than a meter, uh, the bottom icon of a single person, it flashes to let you know it can't get autofocus lock because it's too close. It does auto exposure only. It has a cadmium sulfide uh, sensor for the meter. It is inside the filter rings, so that's always nice. And the auto exposure and the autofocus both lock with a half press. So it's really hard to control if you wanted to you know, compensate for backlight by metering up close and then coming back because it also locks the autofocus. The manual just says uh, that it's a programmed A-type electronic shutter. It goes from exposure value 6 to EV17. So EV6 at f2.8, the brightest of the lens, is an eighth of a second. So that's probably as slow as it gets. And if f12 is right, um, then the fastest shutter is about 1 640th of a second. Information from the AF2, an earlier model of this, says it's from an eighth of a second at f2.8 to 1 500th at f16. So this is probably f16 and uh, top speed of the shutter of 1 500th of a second. Almost all of the 80s uh, point and shoots from Ricoh topped out at 1 500th, so that makes more sense. I'm sure they reused a lot of the technology. It has what they call easy load, and I have some film in here, but it's a, a test roll, so it's no biggie. You just put the film leader at the end, and then this springy jobber in the film back grabs it, it really is easy, easy to load. It doesn't automatically wind on. As you can tell, there's no motor going. So you have to shoot it a couple of times, and then it'll increment the film counter. Opening it did reset that to S. has automatic frame advance. You press the shutter. It goes to the next frame. The rewind is a little bit weird. Um, it has a normal button to release, like most cameras. But then it's a manually initiated um, switch on top. So you have to hold the bottom and then hit the switch and it'll start to rewind. The flash in the sky is decent. Um, it's guide number 12 meter um, at ISO 100. If you don't have the flash up and it's too dim, um, it will uh, flash the little uh, lightning bolt at you to let you know to either use a tripod or the flash. I believe that comes on if the speed is going to be less than a 60th of a second. It takes two AA batteries um, right here. This one, the, amazingly, the battery compartment wasn't too bad. The plastic has a little bit of play in it, so I had to fiddle with it a little bit. Um, I think when I was actually taking it out in the field to shoot with it, I put a piece of tin foil in there just to give it a little better contact. The viewfinder is not bad for a little uh, point and shoot. It's got the framing lines, kind of a circle in the middle to let you know your, uh, your autofocus point. Um, it's got some parallax marks. They don't move, but they show you what would be cut off um, when you're shooting close up. Uh, it's 0.46 magnification, 
shows you about 80%, 83% of the field of view. That's it for the viewfinder. One way you can do some exposure compensation, use this little neurals here to change the film speed. And it goes from 25 uh, to 1,000. And then it also has a uh, self timer with this switch here. So you set that on, then you hit the shutter, and it goes off 10 seconds later. I shot more of the uh, film photography project uh, retro chrome in this. Shot the 320 speed, just had the dial set for 400. The, uh, the slides looked like they came out pretty nice. I've only scanned a couple as a test just to make sure that I got it. So, I don't know. It's kind of fun camera. It needs a little bit of cleanup. There was some duct tape in the cap, um, which kind of credited it up. It's nice that I got a cap because there's a tiny little switch here at the bottom that turns off the meter. And I think they just used the duct tape to make the cap fit more tightly since it's pretty loose. So, I don't know, it might be a while before I shoot with it again, but I think I probably will. I'll see you then.